Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith back. So this is, uh, so we're talking about the loss of 76% of the biomass of flying insects um, over the time frame of 27 years from 1989 to present. Um, you know, massive study that was done and the implications to humanity. This is a shocking collapse. Um, and it hints at a global ecological meltdown. So I'll get into the details. So, you know, when you think of the world's most pressing environmental issues, climate breakdown, you know, that's the one I talk about the most, you know, abrupt climate change, <clears throat> air pollution, okay, that includes uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, water loss, plastic waste, you know, in the oceans, getting up and getting in the food chains, the marine food chains, or urban expansion. None of the above, according to this, according to Monbio, the, the author of this article. You know, it's not downgrading global warming, and I don't agree. I think climate change has a much bigger impact on insects than, than has been determined uh, from, this, uh, from the paper, but we'll get into the details. So anyway, he's saying that industrial fishing, and that's definitely, I mean, we've, we've fished out, we've lost 90% of all fish in the ocean, the large fish. Um, and the marine ecosystems are collapsing, but it's also, you know, acid rain, it's, it's also um, ocean acidification, it's also ocean warming, it's also changes in the mixing in the vertical uh, through the water column. You know, as a warmer ocean, there's less vertical mixing, so it's a nutrient flow. There's lots of other factors in this. It's not just industrial fishing. Um, and the other is the erasure of non-human life from the land by farming perhaps not only non-human life. Okay, at current levels of soil loss, and I'll go into some of these links, but we'll go through the whole article, driven by poor farming practice, we have 60 years of harvest left. Okay, we're losing soils, they're degrading, we have about 60 years of harvest left, if we just continue what we're doing. The Global Land Outlook Report, published recently, this is like a 304 page document, which I'll discuss in briefly, um, productivity is already declining on 20% of the world's cropland. Th these are really significant, really bad things. Um, the, now this study that this article is based on in the journal re peer-reviewed paper, PLOS One, flying insects in nature reserves in Germany declined 76% in 27 years. Okay, and they looked at climate and they looked at all different reasons that they thought of that might cause it. And they found that they, they think it's the, you know, it wasn't those things that they considered. So they think it's the volume of pesticides and the destruction of habitat that's turning farmland basically into wildlife deserts. And uh, this is a very good point. You know, there's distorted priorities. I mean, companies are ruling the world and companies that make pesticides um, have been and, and then sell them and then lobby governments to allow these pesticides etc and have all these grants for scientists to study you know how to kill insects better there's no end of grants for the research how, what about money for discovering the impact of what this killing of insects does the ripple through the food chain etc this work in Germany was left to um, amateur naturalists to collect the data you know not making any money not being paid our complete society is distorted by companies and the bottom line and short-term profits that we're, we're kicking ourselves off the planet um, in the medium to long term. There, there's no question this is happening right now. The question is, can we, you know, are we going to turn it around? Can we turn it around? I mean, can we is not really the question. We have to attempt to turn it around. We may not succeed. Um, you know, I remember driving, I, I, you know, years ago I worked for a laser, a laser company, Lumonics in Ottawa. And, uh, you know, I'm from Oakville, which is near Toronto, and it's about a four and a half, five hour drive. And I used to make the trip. My dad was very sick. He had lung cancer. He was a smoker. He had a lung removed. Um, and during his recovery, you know, he last, he, he lived for about five years after the surgery. But, you know, he was very sick as he was going through this. I was working in Ottawa <coughs> and I'd drive to, I'd drive to Oakville, you know, the five hour drive and my car would be covered with bugs. Like I'd have to, I'd have to wash the car after every car trip. 
um, and I drove mostly at night and bugs and on the headlights, on the windshield, on the whole car, you know, air filters had to be changed. You know, the bugs were out there and now you make that trip at night and there's absolutely nothing on your car. You know, obviously the bugs aren't there anymore, anywhere near the numbers that they were before just anecdotally, and, and Monbiot talks about collecting caterpillars, and he couldn't even find any this year, and you know, the moth snowstorm, moss flying in the headlight beams. Um, so, you know, but does it matter? Do we care about insects? Well, they're critical to survival of the rest of the living world. They're critical. There's nothing surprising. Uh, you know, birds, it, birds that eat insects are collapsing, okay? Bees, the, okay, the bees and hoverflies and many species of insects, they're the pollinators. You know, 80% of the wild plants uh, require insects for pollination, uh, both wild plants and cultivated plants. You can't grow plants without pollination. What are we going to have, little, in, little drones, little insect drones doing the pollination? Are we going to hand pollinate like they have to do for some crops in some parts of the world? I mean, this is pathetic. The notion that pesticide use is essential to feed a growing population is a myth. A study in Nature Plants um, shows that most farms would increase production if they cut their use of pesticides. Um, the neo, the, the neo -nico, nicotinoid pesticides are used. Um, these are the bee killers, right? These looks like they're the bee killers. Okay, the pesticide industry, the global pesticide industry has essentially conned farmers and governments, you know, and I couldn't put it in a better way. The regulation of these products is not proper. I mean, we regulate pharmaceuticals, but we don't regulate uh, to the same extent the uh, chemicals, the hundreds of chemicals that, that kill um, insects. And look at, the, look at the hand sanitizers that you get now, the antibacterial hand sanitizers. I mean, do they undergo rigorous studies? What about when the, you know, they take out the bacteria, right? The bacteria, we need bacteria in soils, we need bacteria in, in the air, we need bacteria, it's part of a healthy ecosystem. Um, and yet these things are all, you know, these products are just driven by profits by companies and there's no collective intelligence in deploying these products and there's no thought to the long-term effect or even mid-term or short-term effect of the ecosystem. Shareholders are first, they're everything, and this is going to bring us down. It's, it's already happening very quickly. So he's saying we need a global treaty to regulate pesticides. We need environmental impact assessments for farming and fishing industries. These are the greatest sectors, according to him, on the living world, even more than climate change. Um, and there's very little oversight. Um, tragedy of the commons. You know, we need to actually use the data from these assessments, use the results to restore and protect ecosystems, reduce the amount of land used by farming, reducing the use of livestock. So a study in Britain says, you know, if you got rid of, stopped using animal products, everybody in Britain could be fed on just 3 million of the 18.5 million hectares of current farmland, or 7 million if all the farming was organic. So there you go. You know, stop using land that should be growing food for people to grow, you know, biofuel products, fuels for, you know, plants and maize, etc., for biogas and biofuels. Would you rather eat or would you rather drive your car? You know, we're going to electric, so, so this is a, so this is a, this is a, this is the paper, um, this is the article that is, is key. So, you know, in terms of the industrial fishing. Okay, uh, you know, we get a concentrate, usually, you know, in a corporate world with companies, you get companies, they swallow the wig, you get fewer and fewer very, very large companies, and they get so much power, they lobby the government, you know, they have a free reign to do what they want to do, they write the, the laws that governments then put into their policies. I mean, talk about convoluted, right? You know, it's, it's the idea of profit over, over longevity on the planet. Um, so anyway, to prevent overfishing, <coughs> right? Sustainable fishing and, uh, you know, 30 billion revenue of these fishing companies, a third of the top 100, right? So we always get this concentration of wealth, it, whether it be in companies, whether it be in the 1% or the 0.1%, 
Um, half of the world's fish catch is thought to involve black or illegal fishing where vehicles trespass, use illegal gear, gear etc. And then we have these fish farms. Now the fish farms are invariably in shallow water and the fish poop and all the toxins and stuff, um, chemicals that are used on the fish, which is a monoculture sink to the bottom. Um, and they use up all the oxygen, you get dead zones underneath. I mean, these fish farms are very unhealthy for coastlines, whereas if we had these fish farms in deep water, out in the middle of the ocean, all that, all the poop and the dead organic matter would go to the bottom, be sequestered on the ocean floor, be a totally different ball game to having them in shallow water. Okay, so we fished out, we've lost 90% of the large fish in the sea. Now, changing your diet could save animals from extinction. These are all links in the, in the Monbio, uh, in this paper, in this article here by Monbio. So I'm going through some of the links. So, um, you know, as we, what we do in the tropics is we burn farmland and then we, and then we have our cash crop, whether it be um, palm oil plantations or whether it be sugarcane or whatever product you know, rice, whatever product we want to grow, you know, whatever product we want, plant we want to grow, whether it be for eating or a product, um, we just, uh, we just uh, clear cut, we, we, we just burn vast tracts of forest. And it's a double whammy because they, they're capturing huge amounts of carbon and all that carbon is going up into the atmosphere. And we do monoculture farming. You know, if you haven't read, um, there's lots of good books coming you know, out there on permacultures, on silviculture. Um, Drawdown you know, is a book I'm, I'm, I was searching for the name. Um, the book is called Drawdown, uh, and it talks about all of these different things that can happen, that, you know, all these different things. And of course, we have to talk about human population. I'll have a whole separate video on human population. I have in the past a couple weeks ago, I went to a fantastic talk, best I'd seen in a while by the Population Institute in Ottawa, and I'm trying to get a hold of that presentation. I'll present it in one of my videos. The number of birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians has dropped by more than 50% since 1970. Farming's the number one threat to wildlife. We've altered some 75% of ice-free land on this planet. If we continue to grow our populations, we have to double our crop production. And these are areas in, uh, that are at risk and large parts of Africa um, and South America, you know, huge amounts of, of species lost. And so this is species lost here and this is a percentage loss here. And we're just, uh, we're just doing a number on the biodiversity on our planet. And what happens is uh, large countries are actually um, buying vast tracts of land in Africa and South America and uh, growing food there and then exporting it all. The locals don't get it, the locals grow it at slave labor rates and the food's exported to the large countries. These are the top 10 countries at risk. <coughs> Right, so this is, uh, you know, it talks about the conversion. You know, it takes 25 kilograms of grain to grow one kilogram of beef, right? Pigs have a ratio of nine to one and chickens three to one. So chickens, if you're gonna eat meat, chickens are the best way to go. Um, you know, beef, I mean, this is, this is a very inefficient system. Imagine throwing away 25 plates of perfectly good food to get one plate of beef. You know, that's essentially what we're doing. Um, and, you know, livestock causes 10 times more de deforestation than the palm oil industry, but seems to get about 10 times less the media attention. So there you go. Okay, so the, the soils, okay? 60 years left before we run out of soils based on soil degradation, uh, degradation levels. Okay, um, so soil is a, the ground under our feet. The earth under our feet is vital. You can't grow food without it. You, upon this handful of soil, our survival depends. Husband it and it will grow our food, our fuel and our shelter and surround us with beauty. Abuse it and the soil will collapse and die, taking humanity with it. This is a, was from a Sanskrit text written about 1500 BC. 
Have we learned anything from that? Maybe not. Thank you.